going to show you what Aduhelm is and how it works. So Aduhelm is also known as Aducanumab. And if I see a word that ends in M-A-B, to me it sounds like it's going to be a monoclonal antibody. That's what the A-B stands for. Now you might be wondering, what the heck is an antibody? And why am I drawing it shaped like a Y? So antibodies are made naturally in your body in response to a cold or to a vaccine. Now they're shaped like a Y in the simplest form and they act like nets. Now during a cold, they act like a net to a virus, for example, the COVID virus. But during Alzheimer's disease, they act like a net for amyloid. Now I'm gonna draw for you in this reddish pink color here, some amyloid plaques. And I'm intentionally drawing them very tangly because that's what they are. They're clumps of proteins specifically the protein amyloid beta that gets stuck together and stops your brain from working. It stops your neurons from connecting and communicating well. So here I've drawn for you amyloid beta plaques. Now I'm going to show you what Aduhelm is going to do. It's going to bind to these plaques and it's going to label them in a way that's helpful for the rest of your body. I'm drawing them in blue here because I'm going to show you where they come from before I tell you what they do. So they actually come from a cell in your body called a B cell. B cells are white blood cells. In fact, they're shared between us and just about all animals. So dogs, cats, cows, they all have B cells. And every B cell has a unique antibody for one target. They can wear the antibodies on the outside of their cell, or when they get fully activated, they can start secreting or basically dropping these antibodies into your bloodstream and tissue so they can go and find their targets. All right, so in Alzheimer's disease, the target is amyloid beta. And I'm going to show you in just a minute what different types of amyloid beta you can find in your brain um, there's soluble forms, fibrillar forms, and most importantly, there's amyloid beta along your blood vessels, and that can be a tricky problem, and they have addressed that in the creation of Adam. All right, so stick around, and I'll show you how it works. All right, now I'm going to draw for you the different types of amyloid that can be found in the brain. The first one is amyloid beta that can be found on your blood vessels. The next type is soluble amyloid. That basically means one single piece of amyloid protein all by itself. And then there's oligomers, which looks like how I drew it, maybe three to four clumped together. Lastly, there's fibrillar, and this is basically those plaques that I drew for you earlier. Now. Amyloid beta on the blood vessel is the number one thing you need to look at when you're designing an antibody. And the company that designed this, Biogen, did think about it. So other antibodies have come along and they've been able to bind to anything, anything on the blood vessel. Um, but Adelheim only binds to the oligomer clumps and those fibrillar plaques so that it's safer basically. It's safer than previous antibodies that have been invented. Uh, it's more specific than previous antibodies that have been invented. So yes, Aduhelm binds to oligomers and fibrillar amyloid beta plaques. It does not bind to soluble amyloid, which is a good thing. And it does not bind to amyloid beta on blood vessels. Although I will show you a little bit of evidence saying perhaps it is a low binding. So let's take a look at that data I was talking about. This is actually from the researchers at Biogen, as well as the researchers out of the University of Zurich in Switzerland. And I want to draw your attention to, first off, these brown circles here. These brown circles in panel C are plaques. These are amyloid beta plaques. And you can tell that aducanumab, which is Adelhelm is binding to these fibrillar plaques like I introduced to you earlier. And they're pointing with this arrow over here on the pink panel, D, to this blood vessel. And this blood vessel is got lots of that hot pink around it, 
And that means that this antibody in panel D is binding to blood vessels, which is bad and potentially dangerous for humans. And then you can see in contrast in the brown panel, which is the aducanumab or adohelm, that there's much less binding to the blood vessels, which was their intention. And this proves that there is low binding of adohelm to blood vessels, which is an improvement over previous antibodies. How does adohelm work? And I'll show you. I'm drawing some amyloid plaques for you here in pink, and then I'm going to draw for you the adohelm, the antibody, here in blue. Now I'm drawing them as these little Y-shaped nets like I told you about earlier. And what they're gonna do is they're going to activate your brain's immune system, which includes astrocytes, the cells in the bottom, and microglia, the cells on top. Microglia remove all sorts of dead cells, debris, and they just sort of get tired during Alzheimer's disease. And the help from these antibodies allows them to bind to the antibodies here. I'm drawing that. They're binding to them. The immune cells, microglia, and astrocytes are getting activated, which is the normal healthy mechanism that's just getting boosted by these antibodies. So now you can see the astrocytes and microglia are eating the plaques. Okay, so let's break it all down in the pros and cons. One of the major pros is that Aduhelm reduced amyloid in an amazing and significant way. Check it out. In gray, those people received placebo. In blue, they received a low dose of Aduhelm. And in green, they received a high dose of Aduhelm. And you can see in either of the groups receiving Aduhelm, there was a significant reduction in the amount of those amyloid plaques found in the human brains. And that's exciting. Additionally, uh, the pros are that Aduhelm slowed cognitive decline. What I mean by that is people with Alzheimer's, the patients in the study, were given tests. And in those tests, they were asked to remember a series of words over an extended period of time, or perhaps draw a clock with the arms facing to the correct time. And in these studies, the patients with Aduhelm had slowed cognitive decline, somewhere between 20 and 40% less than the placebo. That's remarkable. Now the cons. Let's be honest, it's very expensive. $56,000 a year, you have to go in, receive an IV once a month. $56,000 a year can buy you a full year of care at a extended care facility, or perhaps even have a nurse or a CNA come live in your home for a year. And the big con, the reason this is so controversial, is that the cognitive data is not consistent. There were two main studies, Engage and Emerge. Now, Emerge had amazing data reduced amyloid and slowed cognitive decline. Way over the placebo, it was a home run. Now ENGAGE was done with a similar number of people during a similar period of time, but their data was pretty neutral. There was reduced amyloid, but there wasn't that amazing slowed cognitive decline. So the FDA was confused. Obviously, scientists wish we could have a third series of data. That's why a lot of scientists are saying, let's wait. Let's wait and see what happens with a third series of data because the cognitive data is not consistent. And so I think that's why there's all of the, you know, people who voted no on the FDA committee to approve this, and then the FDA went ahead and approved it anyway, because the data from the eMERGE study was very, very convincing and persuasive. So um, basically, it's up to you and your family. Right now, certain groups, particularly if you know your family's genetic history, people who have the APOE4 genotype, that actually happens to run in my family, and I'll have a video on that upcoming. Basically, people who have APOE4 seem to benefit very strongly from these studies. And people with APOE3, a majority of them benefited, but not everyone. So things to think about are, do you have the financial ability to do this? Will it be covered by insurance? Do you have APOE4 genetics? Um, if nobody in your family has Alzheimer's disease right now, keep an eye on this for the future. If somebody in your family does have Alzheimer's disease, talk to your primary care physician about it. And really, you know your family or loved one best. The bottom line is that Aduhelm is going to work for some people. It's going to reduce amyloid and slow cognitive decline. But in some people taking the exact same drug, it's not going to work and reduce amyloid or slow their cognitive decline. So that's why right now, without enough data, it's still a risk, but potentially could help you or a family member. If you have any additional questions about Alzheimer's disease, 
APOE, anything like that, please drop them in the comments and hit like and subscribe. I've been studying Alzheimer's disease for nine years, and I would really like to help you answer any questions you have. Stay healthy.